Let's talk about these bias cells. There's a total of three of them in the bottom of this uh, farm radio, this battery operated radio. Actually, farm radio is just something people refer to these radios as. They're really not, per se, farm radios. They're battery operated radios. But anyway, here's two of them right here. And the negative end faces the control grid of the driver on here. And the other one is right here, and it faces the control grid of the first uh, AF, which is uh, right, uh, AF to the control grid right there, for the first AF. And, uh, you know, there's many ways, and, and of course, the, the ones we have in here are stone dead. They, they're very old. So, what do you do? Well, I, I checked around with a lot of people, and I checked here, and I checked there, and I did this, and I did that, and I came up with a, just a ton of different opinions on this. One person told me to just put a jumper wire across that it would work. No problem. Just jump her across them. Leave them in place and then just jump her across. Well, you know, another person said, well, no, if you do that, it won't work at all. <laughs> you know, I have no experience on this, so I don't know. You know, and I just decided, you know, why mess around with that controversy? You know, I'm not even going to find out. I don't care. I mean, that would be, a, you know, a last minute uh, try if something else didn't work. Another person told me, well, what you need is some large battery uh, button cell holders that you can mount up underneath the chassis here, buy a couple of large flat uh, button cells, you know, and slip into the holders and then just just run your wires up to each side of where the, the cells are, you know, remove the cells and just, you know, connect on to either the terminal of the tube socket or just solder up here somewhere. Well, you know, he was talking about this right here. These are a couple of button cells, and they hold those large, uh, large round cells. They would work. You know, I could just mount them up under the chassis. And then again, someone else said, well, all you really need is a battery holder. You know, these things are like, what, one and a half volts a piece. All you need is a battery holder, and you can put, you know, a three, a, a three uh, AA battery holder. This is a six, but you just get a three. And then you would hook one battery to right here is where the single one is. We could hook each side of one battery to that single. And then uh, the other two batteries you could, you know, hook in, you know, you know, run a wire down, run them in series. And then hook a wire from each end of the holder of the double batteries uh, to this one. You know, and, you, and just mount this thing up somewhere underneath or on top or whatever. Well... I thought about that idea and I rejected it also. I said there had to be an easier way to do this. There just has to be. Uh, if there's not an easy way, then I'll come back and we'll try all everything else. And probably would have settled on the battery holder and the battery. Then I found out that there's a guy named David McClellan. David McClellan, he does a lot of restorations or he has done a lot of restorations and he has a website. And he came up with an idea for those uh, bias cells that I really liked. I really liked. It was simple, quick, cheap, last a long time, and easy to do. So what he said was, now here's your bias cell right here. He said, go ahead. Oh, by the way, there's one other way that, uh, before I get into what David said, there's one other thing you can do to these things. You can rejuvenate them, supposedly. You drill a little hole down through here with a drill, and then you take a small syringe, like, you know, uh, uh, the kind of diabetic uses, and then put a couple of drops of distilled water in there, and then plug the hole up. And after a while, it, it's a chemical reaction that takes place inside. After a while, it will build its charge back up, even after all of these years. Yeah, and maybe so, but I'm not going to do that. I don't like that at all. And, you know, be my luck, it would last, you know, you know, two weeks, that'd be the end of it, if it lasted that long. I want something a little more permanent. I don't think we should be using these things over again. They were a great invention by our ancestors, but, you know, hey, out the window with that. I prefer David McClellan's idea. David McClellan said what he does is he uses small button batteries like this, the LR44s. And they come in a three-pack, which was very convenient for our use right now. The LR44. And 
this end of the bias cell is the negative end. This end of the bias cell is the positive end. So what he said is you take your motor tool and your little pick setup. I've got a little pick setup. It takes a little effort. Pick all that crap out of there. Get all this black junk out of there. Clean it all out. Clean it up good. And then take this thing right here and set it down in there. It fits perfectly. <laughs> I thought that's a great idea, you know. I've always said in all my restorations, if you go back, I've always said that if I see a good idea, I will implement it. And I will implement this. The only drawback you have, and it's very minor really, is the end of the battery that goes in and makes contact on the button cell is positive and it will be going in this way which will turn instead of negative on this end that positive contact with that button cell actually turns it positive so you'd have to install it bass backward from what it was in there originally okay you don't as far as I can tell there won't even be any cement required or anything that thing will go down in there far enough to where I can place it between these two contacts and also in these between these two sets of contacts just remember the polarity will have to be reversed because of the polarity on the button cell is different is a hundred you know is a hundred eighty out from what it was on the original cell great idea I love it I'm gonna give it a shot well doing this is pretty messy you can see my fingers the moto tool I've been grinding uh, through that upper layer of black stuff it's about oh I don't know a little more than a sixteenth of an inch thick and it's hollow down in there and that's where the chemical stuff was yeah so if you ever decide to rejuvenate your bias cells rather than go this route uh, you'll break through the top through that thickness and then you'll add your water without going crazy I want to understand you don't want to put a ton of water down in there but that's what they look like I'm gonna keep grinding till I get it out of there well that's it. Uh, I've got all the crap out of the inside. It wasn't any big deal. The whole thing took about five minutes. Uh, underneath that black stuff was a powdery white substance. That's what gave us our chemical reaction to water. I'm certain about that. I don't know what it is. It said something on the internet one time. I read I read what it was. But you know, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't really care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's gone. So all I have to do now is clean this out with alcohol real good. And then when I get done, the old watch battery will go in there with the positive side going in like so. And it'll catch on that ridge. And that'll, that'll make my contact causing this end to become positive. Whereas before it was negative. Remember that. So it will go in right here with the positive end. I mean the uh, negative end toward pin 6, which would be right here. The negative end being right here. And there it is. The first one is in. Now I'm going to have to take it back out and clean it up and shine it up and make it look real good and everything. But there's no sense in boring you with cleaning them. And that's the way it's going to fit in there. Just like that. Now it's a little bit difficult to get those back in. I had to take a pair of pliers, these two pair of needle nose, and kind of spread these things apart a little bit. This is a spring, uh, piece of spring wire right here. And it's designed to, to hold it together on the original bias cell. Spread it apart a little bit. Be very careful putting it back in because these are soldered to the tube sockets. Uh, tube socket pins and you don't want to damage those pins. Be careful. And uh, it's back in there and of course now I have to take it out and do it again. And we'll just repeat the procedure for these two right here. And I think there's not much. I'll just show you the finished product in the next video. So I think we can end this one right here. Uh, until next time, uh, oh by the way, by the way, folks have been asking me how am I going to power this radio. In the first video, if you recall, I told you that we were going to build a power supply. All the stuff needed to build that power supply, except for the two transformers that are going to sit on top. There's two small transformers that will sit on top. Everything else is inside. So what we're going to do is build the, trans uh, build the power supply on a piece of wood, a piece of plywood show everybody how it's going to go together and then we'll do our testing out there on the piece of plywood and when we're all done if everything's fine then I'm just going to remove it from the plywood each of the components and put it on a perforated circuit board and we're going to put it down inside this box 
Then we're going to put the lid on after we hook the two transformers up with the wires inside. And this whole mechanism will have a power cord coming out the side. At least this is the plan, folks. <laughs> and then this thing here will set inside the cabinet next to the chassis. And uh, they plug it in, and there's the power source. So until next time, this is John.